Hi, hello everyone. How are you? I'm Dr. Sharna Moin and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to talk about the major openings of the diaphragm. As you guys already know that this diaphragm, this is the position between the thorax and the abdomen. It acts like a barrier so that the structures from the thorax do not enter into the abdomen and vice versa. They remain separated by the diaphragm. But there are few structures, no not few sorry, actually a bunch of structures that have to pass from the thorax to the abdomen and from the abdomen to the thorax. So there must be a gateway or some sort of openings in the diaphragm through which these structures can pass from one cavity to another. Some of these structures are large in their diameter and some are very small. For the large structures, there are some large openings in the diaphragm through which they can pass easily and they are known as the major openings of the diaphragm. On the other hand, there are some small openings in the diaphragm through which the small structures can pass and they are known as the minor openings of the diaphragm. So there are actually two kinds of opening, the major opening and the minor opening. So you can see the major openings here. Minor opening is not shown in this model. Among these two openings, the major openings are the most important. And regarding these openings, you have to know their vertebral levels, the structures passing through these openings, and the effect of the contraction of diaphragm on them. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the major openings, which is very important. So this is the diaphragm. You can see its peripheral portion, it is muscular. And the central portion is tendinous and this is known as central tendon of the diaphragm and let me to remove the sternum so you can see this is the central tendon and these two these are the domes this is right dome and this one is the left dome you'll find another video of its origin and insertion in my playlist of the diaphragm these are the major openings. Now let's see their vertebral level. These are thoracic vertebrae and below you have the lumbar vertebra. So let me to write down the numbers for you. I'm choosing the color pink. Pink looks good. So these are the thoracic vertebrae, right? And I think it will be better if I can bring the intervertebral disc. So, you can see, I've already brought the intervertebral discs. So, this is the disc between two vertebrae, okay? So, I'm starting from the number 8 thoracic vertebra. So, this is thoracic 8, then 9, 10, 11, and finally, this is thoracic 12. Now, how do you know these are the thoracic vertebra? Very easy. You know you have the ribs in your thoracic cage, I mean in your thorax, right? So you see, these are the ribs, and the ribs are attached only with the thoracic vertebra. And do you know that the ribs are not present in your lumbar region, or in cervical region, or anywhere else. So if there is no rib, then that is not thoracic vertebra. The thoracic vertebra must have the ribs articulated with them. So you can identify the thoracic vertebra by the presence of the ribs. Now let us see the vertebral levels of these major openings. The uppermost one is the vena cava opening and from the name you can understand that the vena cava passes through this opening. Now which vena cava? Superior or inferior? Of course the inferior vena cava. You see, the heart is lying over the diaphragm, more specifically on the central tendon, right? This is the apex, the apex and the ventricles lie over here and this is the right atrium which is lying on this side and this right atrium is receiving blood from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava, this structure, it brings the blood from the head, neck and upper limb, I mean from the superior side and this inferior vena cava, you see the continuation, see, that is the inferior vena cava. So it collects the blood from the lower limb and also from the abdomen and then drains into the right atrium. It passes through this opening which is situated in the central tendon because just above this central tendon you have the heart so that the vena cava can directly enter into the right atrium. So this opening is known as the vena cava opening and you can clearly see oh I think I, I shall remove the ribs, rib cage cage height now this is more explanatory 
For having a clear view, I actually have removed the thoracic cage. Now you can see the diaphragm and the heart with the vena cava. So this vena cava opening is situated. Let me to remove the hand so that I can have a more clear view. Now you see, this is the vena cava opening, right? And it is situated at the level of the intervertebral disc between the thoracic 8 and thoracic 9 vertebra. In some books, they say it is in front of the thoracic 8 vertebra. So, yeah, it may vary. So, here in this model, you can see that it is at the level of the intervertebral disc between the thoracic 8 and thoracic 9 vertebra. You see the vertebras, thoracic 8 and thoracic 9. So, okay, so that's the vena cava opening. So, let's go to the next one. This is the second opening you can see. And, yeah, so let's bring this structure to see. What structure is passing through here? Okay, so I brought this structure. Um, so let's remove the heart and the vena cava and have a clear look on the second structure. Not fade, hide, hide. Okay, now I'm having a clear view of the second structure. I mean, second opening. So, you know, this is structure, this is the esophagus. The food particles you intake goes down through this tube. So this is the esophagus. Can you see that this esophagus is coming down through this opening? That is why this opening is known as the esophageal opening. So esophagus comes down from the thorax to the abdomen through this opening and then, then it becomes the stomach. So this is the stomach. Now what is the vertebral level of this opening? I think I have to hide this or what? Can I see? I think I have to hide this. So let's fade the diaphragm. Okay, now see? Can I see? The level? Yeah. So at this level, the esophagus is passing through the diaphragm. I mean the opening is present at this level. At the level of the thoracic 10 vertebra. See? This opening. Uh, so atico diaphragm. So see? The opening is present at the level of the thoracic 10. So you already saw two major openings, the vena cava opening and the esophageal opening. Now let's come to the last major opening, which is the lowest one. And let's see, let's hide the stomach or the esophagus. Should I attract? Let's see the level of that opening. Oh, you can clearly see this is zero, zero for ten. See, this is ten. So this opening is at the level of the thoracic 10, okay? All right, now let's come to the last major opening, which is the lowest one here. This opening here, you can see the cavity or opening, and this is known as the aortic opening. And it is lying at the level of the, or in front of the thoracic 12th number vertebra. And it is situated behind the diaphragm, okay? And the esophageal opening was at the level of the thoracic 10. And this aortic opening here is situated at the level of the thoracic 12. And from the name, you can understand what structure is passing through it. Yes, you're right. It is the aorta. You know, when this aorta is situated in the thorax, this is known as the thoracic aorta. See? So that is the thoracic aorta. And as soon as it passes through the diaphragm, or we can say enters into the abdomen, it becomes the abdominal aorta. So that is the thoracic aorta and this is the abdominal aorta. The same thing but different names in different regions. Okay, so this is the aortic opening through which the aorta is passing. Now what is the vertebral level? You already saw it is at the level of the thoracic 12. See the ending of the thoracic aorta that is coming down from the thorax. And at this level, I mean in front of the thoracic 12 vertebra, it pierces the diaphragm and becomes the abdominal aorta. So, the vertebral level is thoracic 12. Let's hide the diaphragm. Sorry, fade the diaphragm. Okay, now you can see. You see the whitish thing? That is the median arcuate ligament. Anyways, it is actually representing where the uh, thoracic, uh, where the thora descending thoracic aorta is becoming the abdominal aorta. So, you can see the vertebral level. So, now I'm going to talk a little more about the openings. Let's start with the vena cava opening. And you already saw this vena cava opening lies opposite the disc between the thoracic 8 and thoracic 9 vertebra. Now, if you see from below, let's hide the skeleton for a few seconds. Yeah. So, now, 
what is that huh nose oh that is the nose okay what is the nose doing here what the hell yeah now it is a good what I was saying uh, if you see from below you will see this is situated in the central tendon right because the heart is situated just above the central tendon and this inferior vena cava must pierce the central tendon to reach the right atrium of the heart see that is why this vena cava opening is situated in the central tendon now see a central tendon has three leaflets these are the leaflets this is right this is left and this is the intermediate leaflet so you can see this vena cava opening is situated at the junction of the median leaflet and the right leaflet a junction okay and you know the body's midline let's bring the skin then you'll understand so this is the skin what I was trying to say that this is the body's midline okay if you feed the skin if you f oops so yeah I just faded the skin this is the body's midline as you saw so let's fade the skin now oh my god why the hell you're looking at the computer like this as if I'm doing something wrong wait this is okay now now okay anyways what I was trying to say that this is the midline okay so this opening is about 2.5 centimeter right to the midline and its shape is quadrilateral the shape of the opening now let's see what structures pass through this opening number one is the inferior vena cava okay so you know this is the right phrenic nerve on the right side of the heart you have the right phrenic nerve and on the left side you have the left phrenic nerve which I did not show here uh, let's see the right phrenic nerve more closely here's a phrenic nerve and ultimately it pierces the diaphragm in the central tendon can you see here it is piercing but few branches of the phrenic nerve also passes through this opening from here to here inside the vena cava opening okay so this is inferior vena cava and these are some branches of the right phrenic nerve okay and also few lymphatics from the liver oh, they did not show it here so you have the liver here so from the liver few lymphatics pass above through this opening okay so ultimately the structures that pass through the vena cava opening are the inferior vena cava few branches from the right phrenic nerve and also few lymph vessels from the liver now let's talk about the second opening that is the esophageal opening let's have a closer look can you see and tell me where it is situated it is in the tendon or in the muscular part yes you're right it is present in the muscular part and of course it is situated at the level of the thoracic 10 vertebra and uh, it is about 1.25 centimeter left to the midline and it is elliptical in shape and you can clearly see not clearly I wish I could remove the suspensory ligament of the duodenum this is the suspensory ligament which helps to suspense the what is suspense I don't know helps to hold the diaphragm uh, holds the duodenum in its place anyways if you could remove this structure the suspensory ligament of the duodenum you could have seen that uh, this is the right crush uh, let me remove the vena cava okay uh, you know this is the right crush of the diaphragm yeah now you can see this is the right crush of the diaphragm and this is the left crush and how this esophageal opening is forming this is by splitting of the fibers of the right crush so these are the fibers of the right crush and these are actually splitting okay see now what structures are passing through this opening of course from the esophageal opening the esophagus is passing let me to fade the diaphragm a little okay now you can see from this opening the uh, esophagus is passing okay now you know the stomach is supplied by the right and left vagus nerve uh, the front of the stomach it is supplied by the left vagus nerve and behind it is supplied by the right vagus nerve okay and do you know about these vagus nerves they are the cranial nerves so they are actually originated in the cranium I mean inside your brain uh, cranial nerves are usually very small but look at this cranial nerve this is coming out of the cranium see I'm not showing the origin here this is originated from the brain so see it is coming out of the skull 
and then it is coming downwards. This is the only cranial nerve which has a very wide distribution and up to the intestine. Can you imagine that uh, cranial nerves supplying the <coughs> cranial nerves supplying the intestine anyways so this is the right cranial nerve and this is the left cranial nerve and let's see the left cranial nerve and the right yeah so this is the left one left one is going in front of the esophagus right see the left cranial nerve is going in front of the esophagus and that is the right cranial nerve I guess that is going behind let's see yeah see this is the right cranial nerve here so in front of the esophagus you have the left cranial nerve and behind the esophagus you have the right cranial nerve and see it actually enters through the opening okay actually in this model they did not show the the rest of the vagus nerve so it actually enters into the abdomen and supplies the front of the stomach but surely I can draw this for you yeah I have to draw this for you I will this will not be that perfect but just an imaginary oh I don't have the yellow color for you here so I'm showing with the nearest one that is the orange color okay I hope you'll understand okay so this is the continuation what where is the ink so what is this this is the uh, left vagus nerve so continue continue So this is the left vagus nerve okay and behind you have the right vagus nerve let's continue that go through the vertebra go go yeah I try to show the right vagus nerve okay okay now let's bring the diaphragm so now you can see that along with the esophagus you have the uh, left vagus nerve which is entering through this opening into the abdomen to supply the stomach and and also you have the right right vagus nerve which is entering into the abdomen through this opening I mean so see it is supplying the back of the stomach this is right vagus nerve and uh, yeah this is the longest cranial nerve cranial nerve but supplying the stomach and the intestine see the longest cranial nerve and also one of the most important thing you have here so you have the blood supply of the stomach you have the left gastric artery and you also have the right gastric artery so you know the left gastric artery it lies above on the left side well maybe I'll talk about this artery later but uh, this is a branch of the celiac trunk anyways the, you see this left gastric artery uh, which is supplying the gastric I mean the stomach okay so from here a branch goes to the esophagus which is known as the esophageal branch okay so this is the esophageal branch of the left gastric artery so you can see this is also passing through this opening and you know you have the corresponding vein over here that is the esophageal vein they're collecting the deb I'm sorry for the extra noise <laughs> I'm getting annoyed with this sound anyways so that is the left gastric vein and this is draining into the sorry that is the esophageal vein that is draining into the left gastric vein okay so you have the artery and corresponding vein you have these structures passing through the uh, esophageal opening and as well as you have some lymphatics from the liver and uh, phrenoesophageal ligament you know phreno means diaphragm okay from the diaphragm there is a ligament which goes to the esophagus so that ligament will also pass that is not important to know but these are the important structures that you must uh, have a clear idea about that through this esophageal opening the esophagus is passing coming down into the abdomen and also the left vagus left vagus nerve then right vagus nerve and also the esophageal branch of the left gastric artery and esophageal tributaries of the left gastric vein so these are the important structures that pass through the esophageal opening now let's talk about the last opening the aortic opening so you guys already saw that this is present at the level of the oh let's hide the stomach this opening is present at the level of the thoracic 12 vertebrae okay 
this is slightly left to the median plane I don't see how it is left to the median plane though and it is also rounded in shape so see it is written in the books that venicaval opening is quadrilateral esophageal opening is elliptical and aortic opening is rounded so how to remember this you know the vena cava suppose vena then hache cava cava for quadrilateral okay cava for quadri you know they sound similar the esophageal esophageal is elliptical and our take you have the r here take the r for rounded okay so cava is quadrilateral e for elliptical and r for rounded our take is rounded esophageal is elliptical and venicaval opening is quadrilateral this is how to remember because actually when you dissect the body you do not see the shapes exactly quadrilateral or exactly elliptical or exactly rounded okay anyways i think that trick is helpful to remember the shapes of the openings now what structures are passing through this opening i mean the aortic opening of course the aorta right so let's bring the aorta yeah now you have the aorta here see above the diaphragm you have the thoracic aorta and below the diaphragm you have the abdominal aorta and along with aorta you have the thoracic duct let's see the thoracic duct so along with the aorta you have the thoracic duct here you see the green color structure that is the thoracic duct so you have the thoracic duct here and also you have the ajagus vein it actually did not show that the ajagus vein uh, is passing through here but sometimes they pass through the opening okay uh, this ajagus vein is draining behind the superior vena cava see okay these are the structures that pass through the aortic opening uh, people often forget these structures uh, but you see the body's most posterior things will be situated in the most posterior site i'm very sure that you already knew about the structures passing through the posterior mediastinum these are the structures present in the posterior mediastinum i mean behind the heart you have the pericardium here behind the pericardium you have the posterior mediastinum so these structures are situated behind the heart near the vertebral column the exact same structures you can see here uh, that are passing through the uh, aortic opening because this opening is lying behind the diaphragm posterior most structures they have to pass through this opening instead of the other two openings okay there's a mnemonic for you again this is more applicable for people who speak bangla you know atta flower that were used for making the breads. A for aorta, T for thoracic duct, and A for ajagus vein. Okay, this is how we can remember. Okay, anyways, unlike these two openings, the aortic opening is not situated inside the diaphragm, not in the tendinous part, neither in the muscular part. It is situated behind the diaphragm. So, yes, that's all. Now, I want to provide you some tricks so that you can easily remember the vertebral level of the openings. You can say, I, 8, 10, X, at 12 okay i for inferior vena cava eight sounds like eight so inferior vena cava is at the level of eight then you have ten in eggs you have e e for esophagus so esophagus is at the level of the thoracic ten vertebra and a for aorta and you have the twelve so aorta is present at the level of the 12 thoracic vertebra uh, this is a way how we can remember the levels I mean the vertebral levels I ate 10 eggs at 12 anyways please do not try to take 10 eggs at 12 at you may forget this so there is another way to remember inferior vena cava right so you can turn the V into 8 so it is situated at the level of the Eight. and you have the iso fagus you can take the o here o for 10 okay and then you have the hour ta you can take t t for 12 
so Aorta is at the level of the 12, Esophagus is at the level of the 10 and Venecava is at the level of the 8. Anyways, I myself do not usually try to remember the mnemonics, 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 mnemonics I guess. I cannot <laughs> I cannot say that uh, whenever I do that I usually forget those lines so it is always better to see the pictures and imagine and have a clear conception or idea and I promise that these are more effective than remembering the mnemonics mnemonics Nemon tour? Wait. mnemonic mnemonic yeah so yes I'll talk about the nerve supply and action of the diaphragm in the next video thank you for joining me Please give a thumbs up if you have liked this video and subscribe my channel. I hope to see you all in my next video. Till then, take care and goodbye.